Welcome to our Monday Bible Discussion, Speaking Words of Life, The Curse of Complaining. How y'all doing today? Good afternoon. We are here today to talk to you about complaining against God's leadership. Amen. When we complain about where we are in life, we are actually saying that God is not in control of our life, that he actually made a mistake and that we are on the wrong path or in the wrong place for such a time as this. And that's not simply true. God is in control. And through his spirit, he can pick you up and pull and drag you where you need to go. He can change and put it in your mind, change your fleshy mind, and make uh, and come and drop his spiritual wisdom and, and revelation and what he wants, his will, in your heart, and then you'll actually just carry it out and not even realize that God is in control. And where you are is where you're supposed to be if you're being taught the word of God. Amen. We are here to build the kingdom of God on earth together. And the body is trying to come together. And the enemy has been putting the curse of complaining in the midst since Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt. Listen to these scripture stories. Amen. Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because the Ethiopian woman he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. So they said, Has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than all men who were on the face of the earth. Suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Aaron and Miriam, come out, you three, to the tabernacle of meeting. So the three came out. Then the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both went forward. Then he said, Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. I speak with him face to face, even plainly, and not in dark sayings. And he sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against Moses, my servant Moses? Amen. The definition of complaining to uh, express dissatisfaction, uneasiness, censor, resentment, to find fault in or grief. People of God. So the anger of the Lord arose against them, and he departed. And when the cloud departed from above the tabernacle, suddenly Miriam became leprous, as white as snow. Then Aaron turned toward Miriam, and there she was, a leper. So Aaron said to Moses, Oh, my Lord. Please do not lay this sin on us in which we have done foolishly and in which we have sinned. Please do not let her be as one dead whose flesh is half consumed when he comes out of his mother's womb. Amen. This came from Numbers 12, 1 through 12. People of God. We often argue over minor 
disagreements in our leadership, leaving the Aaron curse on us the, with the real issue untouched. Such was the case when Miriam and Aaron complained against and criticized Moses. They represented the, the priests and the prophets, the most two powerful groups next to Moses. But the real issue was their growing jealousy of Moses' position and influence. And since they could not find fault with the way Moses was leading the people, they chose to criticize his way. They chose to find something wrong in his leadership. Rather than face the problem squarely by dealing with their envy, rebellion, and pride against the man of God, they chose to create disagreements among themselves. Stop and ask yourself. If you are arguing and complaining over real issues, or if you have introduced a smokescreen, people of God, by attacking your leader and pastor's character, you are unjustly criticizing them. And pastors and leaders, I want you to know this because when God gave me this word, I had to repent because he made me go all the way back to the first man of God that he placed me under. And I would criticize the things that he did. I loved it. I was doing it foolishly, people of God, without realizing I was falling under a curse. Amen. And we do it all day long. Do not Take, I'm telling you, Pastor Julie, don't take this type of criticism and rebellion, you know, and don't take this personally. Ask God to help you identify the real issues you are dealing with. Amen. Then the whole congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said to them, Oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the pots of meat, and when we ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain quarter every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. And it shall be on the sixth day that they shall prepare what they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Then Moses and Aaron said to all the children of Israel, At evening you shall know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, for he hears your complaints against the Lord. But what are we that you complain against us? Exodus chapter 16, verses 2 through 7. People of God, the complaining of the Israelites happened over again and again and again. As the Israelites would encounter danger, shortage, or inconvenience, they would complain bitterly and long to be back in Egypt. But as always, God would provide for their needs. Difficult circumstances often lead to stress. And then we must understand that complaining is a natural, fleshly response. The Israelites didn't really want to go back to Egypt. They just wanted life to get a, a little easier or they wanted things to work out the way they wanted to. So in the pressure of the moment, they could not focus on the cause of their stress. And in this case, it was the lack of trust in God. 
they could only think about the quickest way of escape. When pressure comes your way, people of God, resist the temptation to complain and make a quick escape. Instead, focus on God's leadership, on his power and wisdom to help you deal with the causes of your stress and the real reason that you don't trust him. That's what you got to deal with because you don't trust him if you don't believe that he is in control and that where you are is where you supposed to be. God promised to meet the Hebrews' needs for food in the desert, but he decided to test their obedience. He gave them on Saturday, I believe it was enough food for two days so that they wouldn't have to, you know, so that they wouldn't come out and gather, but they would get even more. They would get even more and then it would turn. So you got to reach your, if they would, they would, they disobey God and would eat, it would get more. They, they were stocking up when, the, when they see the food raining from heaven, the manna, <laughs> they start stocking up. They wouldn't think about waiting for another day, to, but it would rotten the next day. But see, God was testing them. Amen. People of God, we can learn to trust God as our Lord only by following his direction. We can learn to obey him by taking small steps of obedience and trust and stop complaining about where you are. As if God has left you. People of God, as mature and developing Christians, we must not complain about the leadership we are under for such a time as this. As if God doesn't know best. You know, complaining is like judging someone's leadership. So when you judge where you are, the, the pastor you're under, the leadership you're under, you're actually judging God's leadership of where he has placed you. While not trusting God and believing that you have been strategically put in the right place at the right time, people of God, in his perfect master plan for your destiny, not yours. Stay in your lane and don't complain. Pray. Our Heavenly Father has ordained earthly leaders. He's given different gifts, different offices in his church and pastors to hold his church, to lead God and direct his sheep. His individual people that he has placed and laid up in their care from the foundation of the world. And people of God, if we truly believe that God is in control of our life's direction, if he is in control of everything, that he created everything, it is dangerous for us to complain. It's like trying to change God's plan because you don't trust his guidance. It's not really the people, the pastor, or the leadership. It's God. That's really the root of the problem. And if the Israelites fell under a curse from complaining about the leadership of Moses God had placed them under, then we can put ourselves in this same danger. And our Heavenly Father is telling us to repent. Go back and let the Holy Spirit take you back all through your life and repent for complaining against the pastor and the leadership and really the guidance and leadership of the father. Amen. To doubt God and not trust him as if he let you go astray and he's not in control of your life. Amen. People of God. And if you complain about God's leadership, it puts us under a curse, people of God. Don't you understand? It comes with a lot of things. 
not trusting, not really believing, not really uh, giving lordship to, not acknowledging the Father as the shepherd. Our Heavenly Father is calling us to stop complaining and pray for our leaders. If we believe we are under the divine direction of our God, and that we are just where we are supposed to be for such a time as this, then when we complain, people of God, about the leadership that God himself has placed us under, if we complain uh, about God's shepherds and the leadership of the church and come against them, talk about them, we come under the same curse of complaining that the Israelites and Aaron and Miriam did. Because what it boils down to is that you are really complaining about our Heavenly Father's leadership in your life. You don't believe the Word of God. You don't believe the real promises of God. You have forgotten your first love. We have to go back. We have to repent because we all have done it. I've been in the church 42 years and I've seen it. And so I stand as a, a, a person of God that has done the same thing, but willing to humble myself in a minute. A pastor and the leader's assignment is making disciples of the nation. Okay? By leading people in the way they should go. So stop complaining as if you know better than God about where they are supposed to be, what they're supposed to be doing. Instead of complaining, let's come alongside of our pastors. Okay? Pray for them. Let's keep them encouraged and help them build a foundation for God's house the church on the earth in Jesus' name. Remember, we don't want to find fault in what God is doing in somebody else's life and how they should be led when you're not the leader. Amen. God didn't call you to lead. You're not in that position. You are priests and kings like Aaron and Miriam was. And so it's right after that but you have to, you know, you, you just can't complain about what God is doing. If you believe and are convinced that the pastor God placed you under is following the leading of God's spirit, if they are loving and caring and they are giving you godly guidance, then stop complaining, people of God, and pray for God to give them everything they need to lead his people. Pray for them to receive the godly wisdom, revelations, divine spiritual insight, and the weapons of warfare that they will need to give us God's divine direction. Amen. People of God, I'm not talking about false prophets. I'm not talking about fake pastors. I'm not talking about imposters that preach false doctrines and, and, and fake shepherds that preach something different than the Holy Scriptures. False prophets that leads God's people astray with false doctrine. That's why it's so important to ask the Holy Spirit for physical and spiritual discernment so that you can see the truth in the midst of the world's lies. Uh, people of God, this Bible discussion was given to me personally, and I had to repent. Because God gives me the word first, and then once I repent and I get it, and I'm trying to learn from it, he has me to share it, have us to share it with you. And I'm grateful that he has given us this assignment. I just have to say that. Okay? So I had to repent. I know I'm not the only person that has complained about the shepherds and the leadership. But God is calling us to 
pray for them instead of complaining about the direction that God is leading them in. Pray for them to hear God's divine instructions from heaven. Pray for them to have godly discernment of the times that we are in. And pray for the Holy Spirit to continue to lead them in the way they should go. Pray over them and their families and their circumstances. Because people of God, if you going through something, you can imagine how people, the enemy is attacking your pastors and your leaders. Amen. So this word is simply to remind you and to warn you to don't come under the curse of complaining. Stop complaining about pastors and leaderships that God has placed you under. Our Father knows the way we should go. We must trust the road he has placed us on. Amen. People of God, this ends our Bible discussion for today. Go back over the scripture stories we provided with the Holy Spirit's direction and have your own Bible discussion. Uh, then repent of that rebellious spirit. You know, I want to give you this last definition, and it is of rebellion because that's what you're doing when you criticize and you complain about what uh, God is doing in somebody else's life. You can, it's open, organized, and arm resistant to one's government or rule resistance to or defiant of any authority control or tradition you can't come and tell somebody else how god wants them to do or, or to follow the way he should go okay god can speak to him himself so pray for them rebellion is a witchcraft spirit that wants to be in control at all times and not follow anyone else's directions. Stop questioning the leadership of God and finding fault in the leadership he has placed you in. Pray and stay in your lane, people of God. Uh, this ends our Bible discussion. Uh, if you don't know Jesus Christ and you would like to repent and ask him to come in your heart, Repeat after me and say something like this. You need to repent of your sins. If you believe in your heart that Jesus is God's son and that he was crucified for our sins and raised for our justification, okay? And you ask him to come in your life. This is a real thing, baby. He will, just like the devil is real. Just like he has been keeping us under this uh, curse of complaining hallelujah i felt free after i repented even though i didn't even know that it was operating in my life still i did not realize i was doing it foolishly and god knew that so he wanted me to share this word with you so you could get down to business repent and get back on the good foot amen the narrow road okay now uh, if you have asked Jesus to come in your life, he did. So now you need to tell somebody, get you a Bible, ask the Holy Spirit to help you to understand God's word and reveal his mysteries. And he will ask him to live inside of you. And he will when Jesus comes in. And then he will rise up and touch, heal, deliver, and set free every power of your life he's waiting for you people of god he created you to be a part of the family and the only way you miss this is by not trusting his leadership and coming under the curse of complaining and not trust in jesus name amen the benediction people of god the lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26.
heart that follows heart. 